the ability to go to sea and to look for excitement. It is that magical, mystical ambiance that draws men like myself. <laughs> Uh, the gold and silver were important too. <laughs> he was the most ferocious, the most scary of all the pirates. A rabble rouser of the first order. He was, in my eyes, the first great international terrorist. He knew something about the human psyche. He was certainly a leader. There will be others who will say, well, he was a criminal. He was part of our history. The whole world is interested in Blackbeard. It's the whole world. The most notorious pirate, the most notorious pirate ship, Blackbeard and the Queen Anne's Revenge. I'm Bill Leslie at Beaufort Inlet, North Carolina. Nearly 300 years ago, Blackbeard sailed these waters right here. So legendary, so larger than life. He's become the stuff of storybooks, as though he were just fiction. But you know, the facts are beginning to surface. Artifacts pulled from a wreck that rests right out there. Quite possibly the Queen Anne's Revenge. Blackbeard's flagship, which flew the flag, the black flag of Blackbeard. To find a ship that was actually used by a pirate, especially one as, as celebrated as Blackbeard, is really, really exciting. It was a November day in 96 off the coast of Beaufort. A salvage team tripped upon a pile of rubble resting on the ocean floor. Divers plunged in. They found anchors and cannons. Could it be Blackbeard's flagship? The team took note of the date, November the 22nd, 278 years to the day the infamous pirate perished. Now it seems Blackbeard has reared his beheaded head. Welcome y'all aboard. Blackbeard has captured the world. They're really gonna go crazy with this. Absolutely fantastic story. Oh, it's absolutely a blast. A trip to sea, voyage to the site of the wreck. It's important to me that the story gets told. So what we were able to do was to get a mooring from the Dan Moore to the blocks. I'm told that my video is gonna end up on several different networks. Well, he's a larger than life figure. You know, he was his own best PR man. The real story is still there to be told with videotape. And that's my job. And so that's kind of why we're out here today. How do we know whether it's Queen Anne's Revenge? Looks like a good, good boat ride, beautiful day. In their eyes, it's a big story. Archaeologists won't put a price tag on the discovery. We decided the proper way to do QAR would be on a nonprofit basis. It's the right thing to do. They say it's impossible to attach value to something that will provide North Carolina with so much history. I think the uh, best view is going to be over here on this uh, port side of the boat. Hey, how you doing today? Pelican, Pelican, this is LCU. Go ahead. Just wanted to update on what's going on over there, over. Just this morning, we've discovered our 14th cannon. So we're 14 and counting, over. 14 and, let's see, that'd be what, 26 to go. <laughs> the amazing thing is how close to shore it is. It just seems phenomenal that no one has found it before now. Yeah. Pelican is pretty much sitting right on top of the wreck right now. It's like a needle in a haystack, I guess. I just wanted to point out that our mascot, uh, Jack, Jack the Russell Terror, as we call him, is uh, investigating the artifacts as they've come aboard. You'll see him <laughs> He's back so there. cute. We're, uh, we're ready to roll. I'll have a safe journey back, and uh, we'll see you back at the dock. Uh, this is a research vessel Seahawk standing by on 7-4. 
Coming up tonight, I'll tell you why archaeologists say North Carolina is much better from having found it. Everything went pretty smooth, looks like to me. Born in the year 1680, uh, they called me Edward Teach. I'm best remembered, however, as Captain Blackbeard. Imagine, if you will, this face seeming like the devil, wearing somewhere between 50 and 75 pounds of weapons. Aye, when Blackbeard's flag was spotted by merchant ships, most often they did indeed surrender. But as far as an evil man, <laughs> just an evil image it was. Let me tell you about pirates. Pirates were a very bad bunch of people. The Mariner's Museum in Newport News, Virginia. Another link to the legend of Blackbeard. A terrible fella, but a lover. He had 14 wives. The Blackbeard story and the Blackbeard skull. Maynard cut off his head and he put it on a pike and he came into Hampton. When I was a child, we used to play at Blackbeard's Point and we always uh, played pirates. Can we prove it was actually his? I don't think so. One of the reasons is that it's missing its jawbone. Whatever happened to the head, we'll never know. Pirates were brigands, they were robbers, they were thieves. Cease firing! And in reality, pirates were not heroes. They were the bad guys. They would be hung up on what they call a gibbet. This is how you can end up, okay? Okay, I think we better go on now, okay? Most pirates didn't have very long careers. It's the legend and the stuff that legends are made of that seems to perpetuate their story. And I think because Blackbeard was such a colorful fellow, he was so big and he was so brutal and he, he came to such a wicked end that people identify and remember him. But he was a tough rascal. But they brought his head back here to Hampton. And underneath that tree is where Blackbeard his head was displayed on a 20-foot boarding pike for many years. And that's the very tree. And that's the tree. It's still there today. He definitely wanted to be uh, upwind. Alan Scott, historian and tour guide. It's an amazing place to me. Yeah, no doubt about that. A guy named Israel Hand. Well, Blackbeard and he got into a drinking bout one night, and Blackbeard, just for the heck of it, took his pistols and blew his kneecap off. <laughs> nice guy that he was, you know. Yeah, talk about a mean drunk. <laughs> well, not exactly Earl Flynn. <laughs> it makes you wonder why someone who was fairly well educated for his time and place would have gone that far over the line. He was also something else. He had 14 wives and never been divorced. Well, maybe that explains it. <laughs> Maybe let's just say it's part of the legend of Blackbeard. Something about Blackbeard has always been kind of mysterious. Uh, his body disappeared, his head disappeared. So they have a spot here, but no marker. I'm part of the legend, maybe. Well, it's roll and go, Queen Anne's revenge, heave and ho, me lads. Well, it's roll and go, Queen Anne's revenge, Blackbeard has steered a course full of fear from the deck of Queen Anne's revenge. Oh, it's gorgeous. Well, this is definitely a Blackbeard day. <laughs> kind of misty and um, mysterious. Well, from where we are, it's only just a mile away. It's just incredible. It's hard to believe, but it's there. Well, it's roll and go, Queen Anne's revenge. Heave and ho, me lads. She was, at 40 guns, by far the most powerful ship in the New World. Blackbeard has steered a course full of fear from the deck. A Queen Anne's Revenge. I ran her aground, I did, on a sandbar. I had no use for the ship, and if I was not going to use her, 
Neither was anyone else. <laughs> alive on Queen Anne's Revenge. Blackbeard, the legend lives, and in some ways his ferociousness follows. That feisty fight in the belly brought up from below along with the artifacts. It is the artifacts that are causing a conflict now, which some say is overstated. But who does get the loot? At least four museums, like this one here, are maneuvering now like buccaneers battling over the booty. Who wins and who withers? It belongs to the whole state and even to the world. There's just gonna be so many artifacts. He is a legend. He's too big for one town. He's almost like a folk hero more so than the rogue that he actually was. <laughs> Piracy and Blackbeard has been a strong tradition here for many, many years. We're here surrounded by water. Blackbeard lived over there. Other pirates walked up and down the main street. So I feel it's appropriate that we do have some artifacts. Obviously, we don't want 10,000 of them here, but that we should have a display showing he lived here. I'm a very reasonable person. <laughs> uh, this is one town he'd probably recognize if he came back. Could I have your attention, please? We're just about ready to start. Isn't it exciting? Uh, I'm going to briefly give you a summary of uh, what we've discovered so far. October 97, Beaufort. Archaeologists unveil some of the artifacts. Cannons and anchors. This is a 24-pound cannonball, which is huge. And this is a lead sounding weight, 21 pound. This is another cannonball, smaller, a four pound iron shot. And everything certainly points to this wreck being the Queen Anne's Revenge. We're probably 95% certain now. And uh, they gave us a call. Mike had a cell phone on the boat and said, you know, are you sitting down? I said, yeah. And he said, are you ready for this? And I said, what's that? He says, I think we found Queen Anne's Revenge. But your whole tenor is that this is, you're well, awfully convinced that this yeah, is. Yeah, the archaeologists are, are yeah. they're really convinced. Yeah. To actually be able to bring up these materials that you can say were used on this ship while it was a pirate vessel is totally mind-boggling. Fort Fisher on the North Carolina coast. There's no telling what, what's inside this thing. Nathan Henry sounds like a dentist drilling a tooth. He's an archaeologist chipping away at history. Most anything can pop out of the concretion. This is a cargo hook pulled from the wreck. The hook might be 300 years old. Blackbeard uh, hauled a lot of uh, booty off of other ships using cargo hooks just like this. It's just as much fun, if not more fun, than picking it up off the bottom of the ocean. It's a piece of the puzzle. So that's a platter from, from the this Queen is a, Anne? This is a pewter platter that was found on what we think is the Queen Anne's Revenge. So you think Blackbeard probably ate off that? I think it's a good possibility. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a, that's a barrel hoop right there. The other thing I think is a sword. Yeah, that, that's going to be one of my next projects there. <laughs> It's like opening a present, because you really never know what you're going to find when you get inside of it. It's a beautiful world. It's a quiet, it's sort of floating around in, a, in another world. Now, here's one of the flukes of the anchors. What's that right there? All, all this material here is um, ship's riggings. This area out here, we dug and found one of the cannons. I think it's a lot like the, what I would think a detective goes through when he goes into a, a murder scene. You never know what you're going to find. You just never know what you're going to come up with, particularly under the water. Nobody even realized that the Queen's Revenge was here at Beaufort Inlet. Nobody paid any attention. Phil Masters makes a living searching for sunken treasure. His company found the wreck. 
The loss of the Queen as Revenge, you might consider to be a defining moment in American history. The golden age of piracy seemed to die the moment the Queen as Revenge died. There's no evidence that Blackbeard himself ever had any great treasure. The idea that people are out hunting for Blackbeard's treasure to me is ludicrous. I don't think there is any. I wish I had known him. Working on a shipwreck site is about as close to time travel as will ever come. The man could have fired it off himself at some point. You, no think, you think Blackbeard fired that? She could very easily could have, yeah. David Moore with the North Carolina Maritime Museum in Beaufort. He might well be the country's leading expert on Blackbeard. And I tell you what, it's loud. <laughs> and a number of them, oh man. And those things coming at you, three tiers of guns, and you know all of those projectiles are heading in your direction. Ah, good Lord. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. All that noise. The, they, they say the, uh, the gunners uh, were, for the most part, deaf. But I think it would have, yes, I think it would have shivered your timbers. <laughs> but I, I'm just, I'm, I'm extremely comfortable that we do have the Queen Anne's Revenge. Well, it's roll and go, Queen Anne's Revenge. Blackbeard has steered a course full of fear from the deck of Queen Anne's Revenge. Blackbeard was an incredible leader of men. He was not the monster he was made out to be. Time has a way of stretching the truth. I can't help but wonder, would Blackbeard live up to his legend? Researchers believe his career as a pirate captain lasted only about 15 months and there's no record that he ever killed anyone, except maybe during his final fight. And yet today, after almost 300 years, Blackbeard is revered. Pirates are a part of who we are. Ba, 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 ba. We are the Pirates ECU. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun when we come and invade. It's the biggest game of the I year. I think we're going to have a good game today. It's just going to be like raping and pillaging all just over stay again. Off the field, would you? Well, no, off the goal. He's got a lot of baby. They found Blackbeard's ship, I think, and they're getting recovering artifacts and stuff. But I think he had a whole fleet of ships, and it was the main one, the Queen Anne's Revenge. Or, and they just found it. They just found it. It's in, it's in shallow water. I don't know. They're they pulling artifacts. Yeah, there are divers down there pulling up artifacts. I don't know what. <laughs> Peg legs. Peg legs. <laughs> well, I identify with it. It's just the kind of guy I am. I think the mystique still lives. Ask some stay fans. Let's drift back to about old 1715. Two ships foundered right out here off Beaufort Inlet. We think the one is the Queen Anne's Revenge. Now, the crew, we don't know what happened to them. The legend is that some of them never left Beaufort. And uh, there are families that claim they have still remnants of that pirate blood running through their veins. And of course, we don't really know much about Teach or Blackbeard, but the legend has it that he and his crew would come into town and he would rendezvous with a lady friend at the hummock house. It's still there, it has two tremendous chimneys. That is what we are led to believe Teach Blackbeard did. There is a romance to the sea, as always. And there is a romance to Blackbeard, yeah. And as long as nobody decides to be a pirate and uh, blow the town down, that's fine with me. Well, it's roll and go. 
Queen Anne's revenge. Although it's a sin, Captain Teach lives again on the deck of Queen Anne's revenge. Well, I wink and a grin and a bottle of gin. He's alive on Queen Anne's revenge. We had adventures that oh, one can only dream about and imagine. <laughs> the ship is where they said the ship is at. Like I told you years and years ago, the proof is in the pudding. Chances are there's a lot of people in this area that may be kin to Blackbeard. He had 14 wives, and he had to have a lot of children. I mean, you got television now. Back in the winter time and them cold nights, all they had was a husband and wife to keep warm together. So you just think about it that way. It's possible they could be down through the generations. Some of Blackbeard's blood could be in these people. <coughs> the people in this area are hardworking commercial fishermen. Okra Coke today is not like it used to be. The sea, it rises and rages, churning out there in the channel. Such fury, like Blackbeard himself, as if the pirate is still pounding the shores of Okra Coke, somehow seeking, somehow wreaking revenge. For this is where Blackbeard died, teaches whole. And this is where Edward Teach still lives, alive, on land, in the lore of Ocracoke. November 22nd, 1718, we saw the sun lift itself from the horizon. The actual battle itself took place down near the inlet. Once they actually boarded the ship and they started having the battle, uh, it was very bloody. And then when the smoke lifted, it says, I. Let's board her, mates. He only saw a couple of guys on deck, and he figured, hey, I've killed them all. Then from the holes of the sloop, we were surrounded by British Marines from the bow, the stern, the port, the starboard. Why, there must have been 80 of them. Then I felt the bitter burn. Blood started to trickle down my chest. He was fighting for his life. I heard the command. Off with his head! Lieutenant Robert Maynard, he did cut Blackbeard's head from Blackbeard's body. <laughs> Until Maynard detached Old Thatch with a swap and sent him below to Old Scratch. You think about that he may have trampled around in this area. <laughs> this is where it happened? Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Well, it's roll and go, Queen Anne's revenge. Blackbeard has steered a course full of fear from the deck of Queen Anne's revenge. If only Blackbeard were alive today, what would he say? What would he tell us? In one way, he might relish the discovery of the wreck, for it ensures his own immortality. His legend lives, piece by bloody, muddy peace. On the other hand, the thought of divers poking around his ship as if pecking at the skeleton of his headless body. Then again, it might not be his ship, and wouldn't that be the craftiest trick of all, one that only the world's most notorious pirate could pull off? No, somewhere up there, or out there, or down there, Edward Teach might well be laughing. He lives. He'll always live in our minds as the man known as Blackbeard. Well, it's roll and go, Queen Anne's revenge. He and hold me, lads. Well, it's roll and go, Queen Anne's revenge. Although it's a sin, Captain Teach lives again on the deck of Queen Anne's revenge. Well, I wink and I grin and a bottle of gin. He's alive on Queen Anne's revenge. <laughs>